I hope everyone is enjoying the weekend. I just wanted to get this video out there just to say that I warn folks. There's a dynamic happening in Miami that a lot of people don't understand if you've not been there. We have, of course, the coronavirus that's going across the globe, and everybody knows about that. Everybody knows about the causes of it, what it leads to. But in Miami, there is a large population of people that they're not of ill intent. They are just not educated. And I think it's going to cause a problem, especially in the handling of food. There are a great many food trucks down there and different locales that employ people that haven't had basic microbiology training. They don't understand why food needs to be refrigerated, why food needs to be handled in a certain way, because they come from places where this isn't taught, and Miami is full of them. I always make the assumption, regardless of whether a package says this is pre-cooked or not, you always assume, always assume it isn't, and treat it as if it were raw. Because it doesn't matter if a food is pre-cooked, if the person who handled it after it was pre-cooked sneezed, coughed, didn't wear gloves, whatever, it doesn't matter how much it had been cooked to before, now it's contaminated. In this uh, Five Tips on Restaurants and Three Myths about Microwaves, Food Safety 2016, I'll give you this link, it talks about how there's a myth about microwaves and how they, they kill germs. They You have to heat the water to a temperature that the temperature would kill the germs or the viruses. The microwaves themselves don't kill the viruses. Now, this is going back to 1904. I know people are like, why are you talking about 100 and something years ago? It's important. In 1904, the Meatpackers Union in Chicago went on strike. At the time, four companies ruled the meatpacking world. To end the strike, the companies brought in replacement workers. That's the key. They brought in people that were untrained. Now, we have this same dynamic happening in this country. This is from Mississippi, December 29, 2019. Sweeping ice raids in Mississippi's chicken country opened up jobs for American workers. For some, it's complicated. Quote, it's like I stole it. What happened here was is they took a whole bunch of trained workers and replaced them with untrained ones. And this could be part of the problem that I'm seeing. Now, how does this apply to Miami? There are a lot of food trucks down there. There are a lot of people that are making assumptions about cooked food that they should not be making. And this is going to be the dangerous thing about people coming to that area that aren't familiar with what places to frequent and what places to not. There is a, a story out of Africa. I wish I would have brought up the, uh, the visuals of it. There is a group of people that for so many centuries they have eaten raw, dead, and decaying fish and flesh, that their bodies have adapted to it. See, certain animals can handle things that have been dead three or four days laying out in the sun. We can't. But there are people from other parts, actual human beings, from other parts of the world that have partaken in this stuff for so long that they're immune to it. They can handle it. We can't. And they're bringing that culture to this country. And this is one of the things that I think is going to be very dangerous in Miami. There were stories back in the 1900s of these untrained workers. Some of them had tuberculosis and were coughing up blood on the meat. And then the meat would go, you know, it's covered in blood anyway. You know, who knows whose is what? Norovirus is a big deal. And this is just an, a stock picture of food trucks and a whole bunch of people, I'm not trying to pick on any particular one. But, guys, down here, down in southern Miami, they have a different culture of how they handle food. It's not because, like I said, it's not because they're, they have any malevolent intent to make people sick. They're just not educated. 
And to some extent, some of them, over years and years of adaptation to it, have become immune to it. But there's a whole bunch of people coming to Miami who aren't. And if you think I'm just making this stuff up, this is from the Miami Herald. January 20, 2020. This is 10 days ago. A South Beach staple, Einstein's Bagels Problems, Flies and the Onions, failed inspections. And they give an entire list of places in Miami that failed inspections. Einstein Brothers Bagels. Betty's Restaurant and Barbecue, 601 22nd Street, Fort Lauderdale. Bento Asian Kitchen, Boca Raton. There's Einstein Brothers. Jerk Machine, Lauderhill. Super Dragon, once again in Lauderhill. Some Yum, oh that's hilarious. Some Yum Guy, that's hilarious. Miami Beach, 1403 Washington Avenue. Taqueria Michoacana, Margate. And the list just goes on and on. Fort Lauderdale. Boynton Beach. Boynton Beach is a really, really nice upscale area near Del Rey. So it's not just the poor areas. They're everywhere. And that's why I've tried to tell people, stay away from fast food. Stay away from pizza. Stay away from food trucks for absolutely sure. Because here's what happens. I know I showed a picture in a video before that showed a guy not wearing uh, gloves making a pizza. What happens is when the rush hits and the manager is on the floor and he's watching, usually everything is fine. Everybody's doing what they're supposed to do. But then as business kind of tapers off, the manager goes and does his paperwork, his inventory, whatever. They cut staff down and still orders will start to trickle in. And there's a guy and he's, you know, he's kind of sweeping up and he's wiping things down and maybe he's helping in the dishroom a little bit. And oh, here comes this order for a couple of pizzas, you know, and he's like, ah, now I got to wash my hands and now I got to put gloves on. All the, you know, and he looks at it. It's like one large pepperoni extra cheese pizza. So what does he do? He looks around. There's no manager. Reaches into the cooler, grabs a pan of dough real quick, doesn't wash his hands, doesn't put on gloves, throws some sauce on it, grabs freehand a bunch of pepperonis, tosses on there with the cheese and whatever, throws it in the oven without taking any precautions whatsoever. You know, and they go through these conveyor ovens. And, you know, then he continues to do what he's doing, and he's sweeping and cleaning and touching dirty, filthy rags and all sorts of crap, trying to, you know, get things squared away to close the store. And then he looks and he sees it start to come out the end of the oven, and maybe he just wants to get it done real quick. And then he grabs the pan before it's completely cooked. Takes it out, puts it in the box, what you know, slices it up, Puts it in the window and off you go. And you've got what looks like, which you assume would be, a cooked pizza. But that's been handled horribly. Now, multiply that by a thousand for Super Bowl. And multiply that by all sorts of businesses all across the Miami region. With people that have never even had, some of them, basic microbiology training, basic food handling safety training. Why? They work cheap. And to their, you know, not really trying to defend them, they may come from, from a culture where they've adapted to it. They've adapted to dealing with things like this. I wish I could find the link to that show about these, these African fishermen. Well, they'll, they'll take a boat out and they'll catch fish for like a day. And they'll just throw the fish in the bottom of the boat. And they'll just sit there in the sun for a day or two. And then they get back to shore. And then they've got another, I forget how many hours, to trek back to the fish market. And by the time the stuff gets, and it's not on ice, by the time the stuff gets to the actual fish market, it's been literally laying out for two, possibly three days before somebody buys it. It's covered in flies, a lot of it. And people will buy it and eat it because it's their, really their only choice. But over time, their systems have learned to adapt to the amount of stuff that would literally kill us. It's an interesting dynamic to see. I wish I could uh, find where that was, but norovirus, all sorts of other things. If you're already, this is a good book, by the way, the jungle Upton Sinclair, 
read this if you ever get a chance. It is an excellent, excellent read on the uh, advent of uh, food inspection and different, you know, evil, terrible, horrible socialist government things that we have thanks to people that said, you know what, government should step in here, 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 and here and interfere with profitable business because profitable business doesn't take into account certain things. And this is one of them. So just wanted to lay it out there. Just wanted to give the warning. You know, it. like I said, I'll say it again. It doesn't matter if what you buy was pre-cooked. If it was handled in a poor way after it was pre-cooked, it is just as likely to make you sick as something that was raw. Ergo, treat everything like it was raw. Cook it to 185 degrees. And if you have any question, don't eat it. It's just that simple. If there's a, any kind of a weird smell or something that's just not quite right, I'd rather walk away from the six or eight or, you know, whatever dollars I spent on something than, than take the chance. Because, you know, that could be the gift that keeps on giving, so to speak, especially with these things. So I will leave it there. God bless y'all. I hope you have a great weekend. I hope nothing happens. I hope I'm totally wrong, but it's Miami. So just keep your eyes open. Like, share, subscribe.